You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. John's coming in for our regular town team update. As always, it's uh, great to have you here in the studio. Oh, it's always good to be back here at BRFM. Love it, love it, Daniel. So, of course, we're doing our update uh, on the town team and uh, the Barrows. Um, where are they? I haven't seen them in a while. Yeah, we've, we've had a lot of um, people asking where the town team's Barrows and, and stalls have, have gone. And, of course, by the end of last year, they were um, becoming extremely popular and we had the waiting lists for, for people to, to come and use them. Uh, some local shops were, were using them and we had lots of creative types like like yourself, um, you know, sort of uh, artists and people that, uh, that that made things. So it was a, an ideal opportunity to sort of try out their, their wares and experiment and to see what would work and, and what wouldn't. And um, w- what happened was in November when, uh, when we came to renew the licence, uh, <laughs> we discovered that actually, um, I don't know whether I should tell you this, but uh, the... Um, the license for the preceding two years had had, had been illegal um, and not actually recognised by Swale Council's licensing department. Now, um, I've got no idea how that happened, and I sort of inherited it. But the um, the, the, the the short version is that um, Swale Council said, "You you cannot do this. It has to go through the full council." So we've been in talks um, since then, um, and I really thought. Uh, that we'd have them back in operation by Easter, um, but the talks have dragged on a little bit longer than um, the, the town team anticipated. Uh, but we're still confident that uh, that we can get them back on on the streets uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so the, the, the listeners will be be glad to know that certainly by the summer, um, because uh, as I said, you know, lots of people have been asking what's happened to them. And at the moment, they're uh, they're in our lockup, um, and uh, you know, so so that would be great when we, we get them back. Of course, uh, last time you were here, John, it was just before uh, Christmas. So uh, hopefully, it's not too early to talk about the Christmas uh, lights, is it? I uh, know. Funny. I mean, c- Christmas is a is a funny thing. Obviously, it sort of comes around uh, every year, but uh, people tend to forget that you have to sort of plan it um, ahead, and we're actually already looking at, uh, at what we're going to do for the Christmas lights um, this this Christmas um, last year we uh, I think I mentioned to you on on air last time we we had a few last minute problems um, ensuring that the the Christmas lights were, were up in time mainly because Kent highways introduced yet another hoop to jump through with a, a, a another um, another certificate which contractors needed and uh, very few of the contractors that we dealt with had actually heard about this and you, what you have to do you have to get special permission or you have to go on a course day course to learn how to attach christmas lights to lamp posts um, so, so these contractors who are quite happily putting the lights up across the the road and uh, fully qualified for that suddenly out, out of the blue they discovered that they had to have a, another certificate to attach them to to, to, to lampposts and that's because the power comes from the lamppost and you have to open up the, the little hatch and, and delve in and, and, and plug it in and uh, this caught our regular contractor completely unawares it caught us unawares as well and um, I think I'm writing saying that it caught uh, everybody in Laysdown unawares uh, I think the only person people that that, uh, that, that, that escaped relatively scot-free but with some um, Queenborough, which um, from, from memory I don't think they actually put them on them posts I, I could be incredibly wrong on that one um, but anyway we, we managed to get through um, with help from our, our contractors that's uh, A1 Event Services from, from Medway who have um, been with us for a number of years and and this year we um, we used CS Mitchell of Tenterton who, who came to our aid at very short notice they had the, the certificate in place and they'd done a lot of um, uh, Christmas lights in in London and and all over the the rest of the place. So, so that was really good. 
Um, this year we've kind of learnt our, uh, our lessons there. All our contractors on our shortlist now have this uh, important certificate and we've put our um, order in early for, for new lights this year. Uh, we're replacing some of the strands of the, the twinklies, which are those um, sort of blue and white lights which festoon the, the clock tower. Um, and although they're LED and although you that they say on the packet these will last forever um, they don't because after uh, uh, two or three years in the elements uh, around Sheena's clock tower um, the bulbs do start sort of faulting so uh, so we've got the order in and uh, we, we managed to do it with a <coughs> excuse me uh, with a special order um, so, so, so special price so, so that's really good and while we were there we've um, we've decided to invest in three new displays to go across the the high street around the clock tower um, which will be hopefully a, a nice surprise for for residents um, an early date for, for for your diary daniel christmas light switch on this year saturday november the 26th uh, and, it, and it's, a, it's a good day because um, it's my birthday and uh, I think we're going to um, talk a little bit about the um, clock tower next yes we were, we were talking about uh, the, the lights go, going around the clock tower and I, I think you'll agree the um, the clock tower should be the, the focal point of the, the town and uh, of late uh, it, it's looked a little bit unloved um, so we've been spending time on uh, on looking to see what, what we can do with it uh, we've come up with about four f- four ideas which uh, be interested to know what your your listeners think of them uh the, f- the first one is that um, if you've if you've walked around the the clock tower recently in the evening um <coughs> you will notice that none of the up lighters set in the cobbles work these days and uh, i don't think they have for a number of years now we've asked swale council to repair them but at the same time our members have come up with plans to replace them with led lights which can change color uh like uh the city council has done at the clock tower in home bay have you have you seen the clock tower at home bay daniel uh, no i don't think i've actually it, it is quite quite stunning they they use the company and they they kind of color it with with lights and it changes uh, it can change with the weather um if they have a a last night at the proms concert on the on the beach they have red white and blue uh, sometimes it's green sometimes it's red and it, it just brings the whole thing to life so we've um we've contacted their company and we've also got another company on Sheppey which is tendering for the for the job and we're meeting one of them next next tuesday so we're, we're looking at that seeing uh seeing seeing then if we can purloin any money to um t- to use that um we also noticed uh, that there aren't enough rubbish bins near, near the seats if if you notice if you sit down at the seats the one of the nearest rubbish bins are sort of behind you uh, and uh, and the other one is across the road by by subway which sort of defeats the idea of encouraging people to put their their litter in, in a bin so we've um, we've approached swale council to to order some more and we're hoping to get at least another two possibly three by by the seats which seems kind of obvious and i'm perplexed as to why it hasn't happened before but it's it's interesting and it it just shows that if you stand back and and look at something uh you might come up with a few ideas and again you know if um if listeners are are walking up and down sheerness high street and they come up with an idea um they can always give give me a ring or 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 email or or contact us through the 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 sheerness town team facebook page because sometimes there are obvious things that, that we don't notice um, because we've been there so so long. Um, we believe the um, the crescent around the, the clock tower should be a place to congregate at, to chat, and and actually to, to listen to music. So we've asked uh, two island companies to quote to supply free Wi-Fi in the area, uh, attaching it from the clock tower with a. Um, and that would be really good so, so as you go into the clock tower you can sit down at the seats open your 
mobile phone, your iPad or, 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 or whatever, and, um, and you come up with free iFi, free iFi, free, free Wi-Fi, courtesy of, of the Sheerness Town team. And there is an opportunity there for local businesses to, to advertise on that. And, um, and that should be self-financing. Um, we, we've looked into it, and it, much to some people's horror, um, we will be having a, a filter there to restrict certain downloads of, of dubious content, because what we don't want is sort of uh, people sitting around the clock tower um, viewing, viewing things in full view of, y- of, of youngsters. So we've taken that into consideration. Uh, talking of of music we also want to encourage live music and top quality buskers and with this in mind we're introducing a series of events called rock around the clock and um uh, and what we're hoping to do is <coughs> events usually on, on weekends where people can come along and can entertain the the shoppers um so if <coughs> you or or any listeners know of people that you think would be really good for that and to, to give it a try out um, again you know let me know and we'll, we'll see if we can we can schedule them in and I think you next want to talk about the uh, the flowers well yeah yes again I mean if you um, if you go down to Sheerness you'll see that the um, the black flower planters are looking at a tad forlorn at the moment um, and there's a reason for that we um, we took all the summer plants out for for the winter so they didn't get attacked by the frost although there hasn't been an awful lot of frost uh, uh, at, at, at the moment uh, and we had um, students from the the oasis uh, academy helping to plant bulbs uh, just after christmas uh, so they should be appearing shortly they <laughs> i haven't noticed them coming up yet but they are definitely there in the in the planters um, and incidentally, we, we spent an entire morning, the, the Sheerness Town team, um, with a giant lift, putting the huge planters back into position. Now, you, you've probably noticed that they look pretty heavy, um, and because they're, they're full of earth, um, they, well, they do weigh about a tonne. But somehow, incredibly, these... Um, Drivers, when they're parking, particularly in in Sheerness Broadway, they sort of knock the planters and and they move them around completely out of position, which is quite dangerous for the for the pedestrians. Uh, it always amazes me what damage it must do there to do their cars. So um, I would I would appeal to uh, t- t- to listeners who are who who might be sort of parking cars d- down in Sheerness to try and avoid our planters if possible. That would be. Uh, that would be a, a nice sort of belated New Year's resolution, I think. Talking to uh, John, and uh, of course, it's all part of our regular update from the Sheerness Town team. And uh, I think we're going to talk about the shops next. Well, it's, it's actually really good good news for, for Sheerness. I, I know uh, a lot of people sort of put um, are sort of concerned about shopping uh, in, in Sheerness, um, but when you look at what we've got, we're we're doing really well. I did a um, a, a shop survey not so long ago where I compared Sheerness with with Whitstable, and Whitstable is usually still held up as sort of the almost the perfect town, really, the perfect seaside town. And I I, I realised that Sheerness it has about eighty five percent of the same shops as she- uh, as Whitstable, uh, with the independent grocers the um the butchers uh, okay we, we've got a lot of nail bars and uh, and uh, and turkish barbers and things but uh there is quite a, a lot of choice there um what we don't have i think it's fair to say is uh, souvenir shops um uh art and craft shops like we, we don't have a, an art gallery um which, when you consider the the talent on the island, there there should be an outlet in uh, in the main town for for that. And of course, we're we're a little bit short of restaurants uh, at, at the moment. We've got some very good sort of cafes, which um, which I do some some good sort of egg and bacon. But not everybody wants wants that. So so we could do with some some cafes. Now, so, so, so what's happened? If if you go down to Sheerness now, there are a, a lot of new shops e- either just opened or or opening um 
talking of of restaurants um the john setterfield greengrocers in um, in sheerness you know where that is daniel um i don't know about the name but i mean i must know it I would have thought. yeah it, it's it's opposite the the oxfam shop it's it's by black cat right yeah i think i know the one yeah <laughs> yeah um <coughs> but, but that's been closed for, for a few months now um a, a, a planning application has just gone into swale council to convert it into a, a chinese buffet restaurant so i'm quite looking forward to that and, and going down and getting my prawn balls or, or, or whatever um if you look at the the other end of the the high street um party bits fancy dress shop which used to be hidden in in hope street and they also hire bouncy castles they've just moved into a, a new shop actually opposite the um, the Shinnis times guardian offices and that's looking re- really busy and it's nice and bright and and red um down by the station the train station gino's cafe has had a, a new front fitted and is just waiting for its its sign to go in and that's looking quite nice because it, it it was a battered old thing i, I think uh, gino would be the first to admit that was it. and then um and then some some, some hoodlum uh, broke the glass so it, it's now been replaced with and looks really nice and and it will be even excellent when the when the signs go up and almost next door to that, um, photographer James McKenzie, who does all the photography for the uh, the Sheppey Carnival, has opened a studio at the at the train station end, and he's doing a roaring trade. He actually p- bumped into him, w- went down to see him on Sunday, and there were people queuing to go in to have their portraits, the family shots, um, babies, and he turned that round in about three weeks from start to finish, sort of painting it decorating it putting a new carpet in he's got all his equipment there with his um w- with his lights um and then um completely different if you go down to the end of the broadway near near the, the pet shop um next door to that in what used to be the rspca charity shop um there are there are two women who've moved in and uh, and they've opened a shop called ccg um, which I can't remember what it's for, but it's something like characters and goodies. And it's for mums and dads who want to buy their children uh, action figure clothes, like uh, Batman, Superman, Frozen Princesses, um, umbrellas, all, all the things. You're looking at me stunned, Daniel. I know, I know that, but you, you, you really want one of these, I'm sure. But, um, but, but these two have opened that, and again, you know, that is uh, really taking off. So, all in all, really good news for Sheerness, and I think you know, coming up to the summer, we should get some, uh, 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 some, uh, uh, a lot more attractions coming in. And I think you're going to look ahead at uh, any events. Yes, because that's really what what the town team does. But um, just can I I, I take you back a a couple of minutes to when we were talking about shops in Sheerness. And there is a a chap called Chris Dume there, big black guy who's who's a wonderful person, who has set up um, a kind of temporary shop just next door to Domino's Pizzas in the the backyard of... there's, There's something called the Neptune Social Club. And in the backyard, um, he's got this kind of huge barbecue where he's selling jerk chicken on Thursday days, <coughs> Thursday days, Thursdays and no, I tell a lie, Fridays and Saturdays. And uh, so he's, he's selling jerk chicken, which is going like hot plates and also curried goat. Well, you, you just think, why? But it's... Um, have you tried curried, curried goat? No, 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 I haven't. But you, uh, I bet it's interesting. Yeah, but believe me, I I, I didn't believe it until I tried it. But it's just uh, just just out of this world. And it's like um, he is originally from, from Jamaica, and it's kind of a, a little bit of Jamaican sort of culture in the in the back streets of of, of Sheerness. Anyway, we were, we were talking about the events to look forward to. So, um, <laughs> listeners can. Um, T- take a note be really good to, to see you here uh, saturday july the 23rd 
is the annual Sheppey Promenade event, which isn't actually a town team event, but we, we, we do kind of give them a, a helping hand. Uh, <coughs> and this year the theme is flight, which should be great, especially as the birth of British aviation uh, was on the Isle of Sheppey up at, up at East Church. Uh, there will be a parade through Sheerness, and I think you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, Saturday, August the 6th, is the return of the Sheppey Pirates Festival. That's <coughs> not in Sheerness, but it's at Barton's Point Coastal Park, uh, with what might well be the world's biggest water fight. And there's uh, live music right into the night on, on that one. Uh, so any little pirates would be welcome to, to come along and enjoy that. Saturday, August the 20th, is the Sheppey Summer Carnival in Sheerness, and this year it will feature, and we've never done this before, but uh, during the day we will be presenting the Sheppey Summer Seaside Spectacular, which I don't know why I called it that, because it's really difficult for me to say, but um, we're going to have some good old seaside entertainment uh, favourites, such as... Uh, the glamorous granny competition do you know anybody daniel no no no. right uh the knobbly knees contest do you know anybody daniel no 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 uh and the battle to find mr sheppy will will you be entering daniel um that's a yes okay right i should look forward to seeing that uh in a in a one piece uh victorian's bathing costume uh trying to uh to, to lift a barbell that's what we like to see um and that's great so, so that's our list of events <coughs> and um if anybody as always uh <coughs> would like to come and help with the the sheerness town team uh we're more than happy to to, to welcome you our next meeting is tuesday april the 26th we have a meeting once a month this is at 6 30 at the royal hotel at, in in the back room there uh, and if you think you can help make a difference uh, by all means email me at uh, john.nerden which is n for nut u r d e n at o2.co.uk or you can message us on uh, our facebook page which is sheerness town team John, as always, thank you very much for coming in and updating our listeners that all oh, what's happening, Sheerness team, town team wise, what's happening in Sheerness as well. Thank you. That is uh, John right here at BRFM on the Monday Night Community Show, our very own uh, community radio station, right here on the Isle of Sheppey this evening.